here in a little bit. He said he might catch a little of it, so we'll see. All right. Thank you, Johnny Man. Hey, good morning. Yes. The number is 929-205-6099. Four four zero. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning, uh, men of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Call. This call takes place every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm so excited because uh, we're rolling out this new format, uh, this new format this year here. So we're going to be Facebook Live. Also, we're going to also continue to resume what we're doing now. Uh, We're just changing up some things and changing up a new a new number that we have and also a new access code. Uh, so we're making sure we're reaching out to the brothers to give them the new uh, phone number to call in and also the new access code. But we're going to just have to work some of these things out here, but just be patient with us. And man, we're just so excited. Obviously God has blessed us here with a new year and we're excited about this new 2019 year that's taking place here. So uh, we're just so excited and just honored to have you continue to join us and fellowship with us here on this National Men's Prayer Call. Also, men of God, we're just so excited. This morning, we have a gentleman that's going to be pouring into us this morning. He is not a stranger to this call. A matter of fact, he's been on since day one. And this gentleman is just a dynamic speaker. You'll hear more about him coming up here shortly. Uh, but we just want, again, to thank you uh, for joining us here. Uh, we're going to also, we also have men that's joining us all over the world. Uh, brothers joining us from Nigeria. Uh, we're excited about those group of men that join us every Tuesday and Thursday, as well as the men that join us here from the um, here in Denison, Texas, at the uh, Recovery Men's Center. Here, we're excited uh, for those brothers as well, and um, and also for you as well for joining us uh, uh, on this National Men's Prayer Call. Our format here, just to, so you'll know here, that um, we our format is to just to ask here uh, the men that's on the line here. If there's anyone, if there's anyone 
with any prayer requests. If there's anyone with any prayer requests here, we're going to go ahead and accept that at this time. Also, men of God, just to let you know that this is Facebook Live, and if you would like for us to mention uh, the person that um, you're asking us to pray for uh, by name, we can do that. If not, then we can just say, you can say, can you pray for my mother or my brother or my sister or one of my coworkers or whatever you like to do. So we just want to respect that uh, because it is, again, it's been Facebook Live as well. So just wanted to make sure we uh, do things decently and in order. Uh, right now, is there anyone, is there anyone with any prayer requests or, or praise reports that you may have? Amen. God is so good. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and continue on here in our format here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just lead us here in, in prayer here. And then we're going to just go ahead and move forward here uh, to hear this dynamic man of God, see what God has laid on his heart to pour into us here uh, this morning here. Um, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We come to you this morning, Lord. First of all, Lord, we want to take time out, Lord, to say thank you. Lord, we want to say thank you because you allowed us to witness another day that wasn't promised on January the 8th, 2019. And, Lord, we're just honored and grateful this morning for that. Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory because you're so worthy uh, to be praised, Father, and we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for each and every man that's represented on this call this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because they could be anywhere this morning, Lord, but they chose to get on this call to hear a word from you. And, Father, we thank you right now that we would just receive it right now. Our spirit man would just be able to receive right now what the man of God has to say to us uh, this morning. And, Father, I thank you also, Lord, that every need is met in each and every man's life according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father, there's no lack. There's no want. Lord, we put our trust and faith in you. The Bible says that the righteous, the steps of a righteous man is ordered of the Lord. And Father, thank you for ordering our steps. Oh, my God, Lord, we're just so grateful this morning, Lord, that we can put our trust in you. And Father, we thank you right now, Lord, that each and every man is completely healed. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I bind any attack that the enemy may try to come against us right now as I'm speaking. The devil is a lie and Jesus is the Messiah. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, we love you, we honor you, we adore you, we worship you, and we magnify your holy name. Because you are, the Bible says, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Bible speaks on you being the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, my God. The Bible says that you are the witness, the creator. The Bible speaks on you being the line, the tribe of Judah. And Lord, we're just so grateful and thankful for that. Father, we just honor you this morning on this day. And Father, I thank you right now, Lord. Also, for each and every man, Lord, we thank you for the household. And Father, we thank you, Father, for their spouse. Lord, we're just so grateful that you blessed us with our spouse. Because the Bible says that the house can't stand if it's divided. And two cannot be together except to agree on the word of God. We thank you for that agreement. And Lord, we thank you also, Lord, for blessing with our offspring. And we're just so grateful for them. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that as they go out to school, some of them are going back to school this morning for the first time, Lord. And we just thank you right now, Lord, that the angels are camped around about the school campus worldwide. We thank you for that hedge of protection. Thank you for the faculty member, each and every teacher, the monitors, the bus monitor, the cafeteria workers. Lord, thank you for covering and watching over them, Lord. We just love you for that. And we just praise your holy name, Lord. And, Father, we thank you right now, Lord, for the prayer requests you submitted in. Lord, I thank you for my brother, brother Stephen Brassfield, Lord. We ask in prayer for his brother James Brassfield. We just continue to just lift him up. We bind this we bind this attack that they may trying to come against him. Lord, we just love you, Lord. We just give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Father, we thank you for this day that you'll bless us with. And we honor you on this day. And Father, we thank you now that the time has come, Lord, that you have blessed us here to have the man of God to pour into us this morning. We're grateful and honored for this man of God here, Pastor Devin Miller. Lord, we thank you for this man. Go right ahead, um, uh, Brother Johnny Mack.
Good morning, can you hear me? Uh, no worries, no worries. Good morning, everyone. Uh, blessings upon each and every one of you. Uh, Happy New Year to uh, everyone. Uh, we thank God for the opportunity once again to speak to each and every one of you, uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. Um, you know, in this new year, uh, whenever I'm asked to to bring a message, I never really know what God wants to say until that morning, because the word says that his mercies are new every morning. And so it, it's not good to try in some cases, not in all cases. I don't want, I don't want preachers that may be listening to uh, depend on waiting until the morning that you have to preach. Uh, to get a word that, that's not a good thing uh, you must be uh, you must do everything decent and in order is also what the word says but uh, when it's talking to men and when it's talking to um, when it's to give words of encouragement oftentimes it's good to uh, just give a a forth telling word um, in the Old Testament, I'm in school right now, and in the Old Testament, prophets, and I'm not considering myself a prophet, first of all, let me say that, but in the Old Testament, there were two types of word that prophets would give. They would give either foretelling, which means they would tell of something that was in the future or, or something that was to come, or they would tell forth telling, F-O-R-T-H telling, and that was speaking to what was going on right now and how God uh, viewed it, for lack of a better word. And this morning, I wanted to look at the book of uh, the letter uh, in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh, reading from the 17th to the 24th verse. Uh, have a good day, son. I see you. All right. I see Derek's son. Good. Have a good day. <laughs> I like this. I really like this, 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 uh, the way we doing it now. Cause you can see everybody going off to school is Derek's house. <laughs> uh, y'all need to get the video brothers that are at, uh, got laptops. I need to get the video and get on the video. But anyway, um, Ephesians chapter four, verses 17 through 24. And I'm going to read that quickly. Then I'm going to touch on it. And then, um, You'll be on your way, hopefully, or continue your way. Uh, it reads like this. I'm reading from the New uh, King James Version. And it reads, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have been excuse me have given themselves over to lewdness to work all unclean uncleanness and with greediness but you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put it up a little bit concerning your former it up a little bit Mm. We good? Oh, someone's coming on. All right. Good morning. Uh, reading from 22, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I uh, really want to talk real quick from two thoughts what you're thinking and what you're wearing, what you're thinking and what you're wearing. Um, 
for those of us who are on this line and are believers, it is it is evident to see that the the church or the body of Christ is under attack. That there are many things that are coming up against the church, and specifically over the last uh, several weeks, if you've been following um, kingdom business, there's been this real big talk uh, in the in the community about John Gray and his wife Aventer, uh, and the fact that uh, Pastor John Gray considers his wife. Uh, his covering, uh, that he was, ha that he had to grow into her and that, uh, he was nothing. Uh, he didn't know what it meant to be a man and things of this nature. And it was very disturbing, uh, as a man to hear a man tell other people that, or specifically telling women. And, and again, I'm not sexist. I'm not I'm not Trump. Let me just say that. I'm not Trump. I think that's the, the byword that we can always use as the antithesis of a man. We are not that. Uh, but the, the, there is nothing biblical to say that a woman covers a man. The, the, the man is covered by God. The man is covered, whether you believe strongly, half-heartedly, or just a little bit, The God covers the man. Genesis backs you up on that. He says that in the beginning, when he created us, he created us in his image. Woman was not created till afterwards. Uh, woman came from the rib of man. And so, and I, that's a whole nother teaching that I can go into. My point is this, and, and, and really referencing the scripture, is in the world that we're living in right now, there's this thing called the Me Too movement, where women are being empowered Women are being uh, uh, emboldened to really uh, have a voice. And there's nothing wrong with a woman having a voice. There's nothing wrong with showing uh, due respect and due uh, deference in some situations to a woman. Nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to us as men, men, we have to really know what we're supposed to be wearing we need to be really understanding who we are to receive our instruction from. And when you look at this scripture, it says, uh, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Understand this, men, we uh, who are non-Jews are Gentiles. So whenever you read the Bible and it talks about Gentiles, it's talking about you. There's only two really... People, there's only uh, three really peop three people in the Bible. There's Jews, Gentiles, and sinners. Okay, uh, and if you really break it down like that, then you really can understand your place. Uh, and and that we are living in the dispensation of the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God was uh, or the power of God, uh, the third part of the Trinity was such that all men, all women, all those who have a mind can have the ability to learn of and follow God through Jesus Christ. And so when we understand that, when there's a transference that occurs, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, and that transference is to go from the old way of which you used to do things to the new way. And, and, and what is happening is... Uh, the enemy is very cunning. When you understand uh, the, 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 the tricks of the enemy, the enemy is very cunning. And if you understand that the old way for a man is not necessarily, from a spiritual perspective, is not necessarily the way you do things before you uh, received uh, Christ as your Savior and Lord. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trick your mind for a little bit, not trick your mind, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a enlighten you on where the enemy is taking us. The enemy is not, is taking us not to the old way in which we used to live, but taking us to the, the original sin that got us where we are in the first place. Now, follow me. In the garden of Eden, when God gave man dominion, he then created woman in the, it, from his rib, okay? 
Then when we get to the garden in Genesis chapter 3, it is the woman who is, is, is deceived, tricked, whatever you want to say, by the enemy. And then she gives the apple that she took from the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil, which God forbid them to take, which was the first commandment. He, she then took of the apple, bit it, ate it, whatever, whatever the fruit, and gave it to the man. The man was not in the backyard. The man was not down the street. The man was not at the store hanging out with the brothers because there were no other brothers there. He was not someplace else in the garden. He was right there. So that's one dispel, uh, this uh, myth I want to clear up. But here's what, here's where I'm going with that. When God came and looked for the man, and he said, he said, Adam, where art thou? And he said, Adam answered and said, I hid because I was naked. He then said, who told you you were naked? And then he said, I ate, of the, I ate of the tree and was given this fruit that the woman gave me. And then if you read Genesis, it goes down the line as to whose fault it was. My point is, is that when we look at the covering of man for the sin that he committed, he blamed the woman. He did not take ownership in his own situation. He blamed. So his covering, follow me now, his covering for the sin that he committed was the woman, not his own situation. Fast forward to John Gray. John Gray is saying to us, I was not what I was supposed to be, and she had to cover me. I had to grow into her. Sound eerily familiar to what was going on in the garden. And so when we look at this scripture, it says that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, which means there should be a distinction between a man of God and a man that is just walking around this world. And when we look at men today, and, and men, I hope you're not in this situation. If you are, we are here to help you move and transition. No woman should be taking care of a grown man. No woman should be uh, uh, working and the man is just doing whatever he wants to do. No woman should be, and, and it's not that the woman can't do it, because again, remember I said we're in this Me Too movement. We're in this empowerment movement. I'm not saying women shouldn't be working. I'm not saying that women shouldn't be empowered. I'm not saying women should not be doing all the things that God has placed in them to do. But a man should not be dependent upon that. God has given each of us our own level of dominion, not to lord over, not to enslave, not to move a woman uh, into subservient roles. The Bible talks about submission. The Bible talks about a woman being submissive. But understand this, men, it's not to say it's submissive as subject to. She can only follow you as you follow Christ, understand the word. So if you ain't following Christ, don't expect no woman to follow you. But in this word that I read, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. See, men, we're here and doing what we're doing and using technology and all that to enlighten you, to let you see as well as hear black men that love God, that love, if we're married, we love our spouses. But most of all, we love God and we are obedient to his word, will, and way. And we as men have got to change and flip the script in these days that we're living in right now. And we have got to get to the point where we take our rightful place. And what is our rightful place? Our rightful place is to lead. Our rightful place is to be the example of God in the workplace, to be the example of God in our home, to be the example of God in our schools. Let me move on from this scripture because my time is running as fast as I am. It says this, it says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness, uncleanness and greediness. Let's look at our world today. Let's just take a snapshot of what men are doing who don't know God who are playing with God, when we look at the church, when we look at pastors, when we look at leaders who are playing with God, who are not teaching the word of God in the sense that it should be taught, but are teaching it to only in, in, to, grant, to, to receive 
of themselves. In the studies that I've seen, it said the way you can tell a false prophet is when the prophet is always asking for something instead of giving something. When the prophet is always at the end of the day saying, okay, what can I receive for what I've given you? That is not a true prophet. A true prophet is going to be blessed by God. And prophet in this sense is a oracle of God. And a pastor, a minister, a person who understands God, a person who studies God, is becomes a prophet. He becomes, she becomes one who gives what they receive to those who don't have. So don't so so when we look at this whole thing of who prophets are today, we have a lot of folks that are trying to in, to 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 enrich themselves on on God's word. There's no reason I'm using John Gray as an example. And if any of you know John Gray, just tell him to holler at me. There's no reason that you got to give your wife a two hundred thousand dollar car and not assume that there's going to be some issues that people are going to look at you because they know you're the pastor of a church. And then you got to get online and then you got to give an explanation of why you did that for your wife. If you didn't tell everybody in the first place, you never would have known. But because you see your wife as your covering, instead of seeing God as your covering, and when you mess up, which John Gray messed up, come on now, he had to show her that he was worthy of her instead of giving glory to God and repenting as unto the Lord for the actions that he took against his wife. Claire, let me put a pen there and say this real quick. Men, when we mess up, you run to God first. You seek your repentance from God first, and then God will pave the way for everything to be smoothed out. Let me keep going because I only got one more minute left. It says this. It says, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have learned him and have been taught by him, but as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's another scripture that says this, and I'm going to close it out with this. It says, let this mind be in you, that being the mind of Christ. Men, as you go through your day to day, I want you to ask yourself two things. What am I thinking right now? Every point of day of the day, I want you to check yourself. And I want you to ask yourself, what am I thinking right now? Where's my mind right now? And then when you look at that, then I want you to look at your outer self, your, 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 your physical self, and say, what am I wearing? Not the clothes that you're wearing, but the image that you're wearing. Because it's not about your clothes. I can dress up a pig and make a pig look good. But it's about what are you wearing? Are you exemplifying Christ? Are you exemplifying the word of God? Are you living in the word of God if you, and, and if you are calling yourself a Christian? Now, if you vacillating on what you are, then you need to holler at us. Because we are in a time now where we need to give a true definition of what a man is. We need to give a true definition of what a godly man is. We need to give a true definition of what God is looking for in these last days. And it's not necessarily running to somebody that's what we say in the, in, in the church world that's suited and booted. It's not somebody that's going to be dressed up because when you look at what Christ did, Christ was a common man. Christ blended in with the crowd. Well, how do we know this, preacher? Well, when you look in the, at the latter part of the Gospels, when Judas had to deceive, had to point out who Jesus was, it says, and he kissed him. Why? Because if he just would have said, there's Jesus, he looked just like everybody else. He blended in when they were standing there in the Garden of Gethsemane. But Judas had to, to distinguish the one who, whom was going to be pulled away to die, to, to, to take on our sins. And he betrayed him with a kiss. The, the last point I'm going to say, be careful whoever, whoever all gets all up in your face, because if they kiss you, they might be trying to deceive you. That's just a little sidebar you got from me this morning. But I'm saying this, men of God, we got to check what we're wearing and what we're thinking. And I and trust that we here in the national prayer call and what we're trying to do and where we're trying to go is we're trying to get 25,000 men on this call. Why? Not because it's going to show us who we are and what we can do, but it's really to demonstrate that there are 25,000 men out there this year that want to be truly men of God, men of character, men of, of uprightness. And so each time you're on this call, I want you to call somebody else and tell them 
what you learned. Tell them how you felt. Tell them how you see yourself. And we should be empowering you to empower someone else. God bless you, men, and have a great and godly day. Amen. Amen. Devin, I want to thank you for an amazing word. Um, if I could, if you don't mind, if I, I encapsulate what I got, what are you thinking? What are you wearing? And here's this opportunity for us men as we get ready to go into our week to assume the mantle of man of God. Because if we stay in this place where we're just man, we miss our mark. We must put on that, that, that covering of, of God. It's easy for us to go through this day if we're not in the right position that we can go in here and misrepresent the kingdom. We are kingdom citizens now. And so when we get to up and when in the mentality and the physicality of everything that we do, we must be covered with that of God because we stay in our sin in that way. And so in this proactive space that we that we think about how God wants us to walk, how we're supposed to talk, how we communicate with other people, how we how we live our lives. That's our responsibility. That's what we owe God to make sure that we transition into that space steadily transition even when we recalibrate ourselves throughout the day when we fall out of that position because i would be the first one to tell you that i can easily fall right back into the man portion of me and when we got in there in there i'm easy to get into arguments i'm easy to offend my brother I'm easy to just fall into sin so i want to thank you for that word and so as we join together as we get ready to prep ourselves for the remainder of this week man join me in this prayer Heavenly Father, we come with you right now, and we thank you absolutely for everything. We love you. We honor you with this, Father. And part of our service, Father, we honor you with wearing the mantle of God. Father, we appreciate everything you do. We ask the universe to empower us and equip us with any and everything that we need to get your kingdom agenda across, Father. So we give ourselves. More importantly, Father, we submit ourselves to that call. We thank you. Father, we pray over Devin and his ministry as we start this year off right. We ask you to say, not only from a corporate level of uh, of the National Men's Prayer Call, Father, but our individual le levels of our ministries as well. We thank you absolutely for everything, Father. Cover us, keep us, and make sure that we're doing as we're called to do as ambassadors of the kingdom. We thank you, we honor you, and now we live for you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Me and y'all be blessed. Have an amazing weekend. And as we always say, uh, affect somebody's lives in a positive manner today. Peace.